Then Fife once again going where Angels fear to tread. Very good player as well. 20 possessions to him. There's not too much to talk about in terms of uh, kicking efficiency, but whoever gets it to best advantage, to, as Ben Dixon says, to set up next is going to be best served. Underway for the last quarter and nothing's Here's changed. Another one. Just another brilliant knockdown but the, uh, by Sandlands. But the Suns have cut it off and go forward. Zungu to Bala. Long ball. He just caught with the right fist there. Look at the speed and skill from Hill. Drifts it past and Walters will come quickly. Cameron will be under pressure because Ballantyne comes quickly as well. A long way to the goal line. Did that well. Okay, I've got it. We've gone into the record books. Yes. Since they've been taking records, the most hit outs recorded mm. by the Statsman is 63 to the great, the great Gary Dempsey in a game of AFL slash VFL. Now, uh, at three quarter time, the big fella out there today was on 45, and he had 18 in round one of 2010 V. Adelaide. So, Big Sandy, he 18 is... 18 hits to advantage. 18 hits to advantage. He's now on 18, and he's on 47. So he's... Six... I reckon you'll get the 18 record. But yeah. the he's 16 hit out shy. And they're all going to the boundary. They're getting plenty of boundary line throw-ins. Walters. Now, Walters will get a free kick. Holding the ball. I don't want to get one from the back, but incorrect disposal. So, a free kick to the Suns. So, we're now officially on Sandy Watch. <laughs> yeah, well, watch. Pretty hard not to watch him. Yeah. It fills up a fair bit of the viewfinder. Zungu. I just liked his game with Zungu because a lot of players in the wet conditions have fumbled. He's one through. He's six foot one in the old, so he's another one of those midfields, half back flank. He can play anywhere, win. Here he is again. It's the kick forward. Oh, he's got to trap it, try to keep it in, but it's a boundary throw in, so the big fella can come in. And he doesn't really concern himself too much. He just wanders to the front and flips it over the back. Prestia. That's going to come back. That's seven out in the field from uh, Gold Coast. Zungu sends it back to a big pack of players from both teams. Sandlins was there. Good work by uh, Pavlich to quickly get it over to Walters. Caught on the wrong side. Misses. Two goals, four for Sonny Walters. I was asked oh. during the week who could challenge Pavlich for their leading goal kicker. Said Walters. Yeah. He stays fit and plays every game. He can really damage teams on the scoreboard. Here's Riscatelli, who's bandaged up like five. Dawson with a good spoil. To the boundary side. Hall gets free. He wants some runners. He gets a couple. Yeah, well. Follow Jasny. Prestia keeps going. Dixon finds him. Prestia, long ball towards Lynch. This time it's Johnson with him. And it just spins backwards over the line. Well, that's a deep entry that Benny Dixon wanted. It's also a stoppage that I wanted, so let's see how they go from here. Try and uh, create a goal. Come one metre, Tom. Sandlin's down in front. This time it was Hill. Barlow had to be quick. He was. Let us know he hits 59. He's on 49. Oh, thank you. <laughs> and if it keeps doing this, he's going to keep winning them. Keeps rolling out of bounds. Nichols has the task. There you go. 50. Raise the bat. He's, he's, I think he is. <laughs> Danger ball here. O'Meara. Beats everyone. Keeps rolling. It's still going. And that's true. Only watching Sandlands with a cricket bat, it looked like a table tennis bat in his hands. Right? Would too. Uh... How about Zach? The story of Zach Dawson is amazing, isn't it? In the game of football, and the coach who's had enormous belief in him at both clubs, and people just thought Zach, Zach Dawson was most, one of the most maligned AFL footballers in, in his first two or three years of football, yep. and uh, now he's turned into a, a very, very good defender. 121 games. And there was one specific game, Shorey, where he had seven kicked on him by Anthony Rocker. Yes, I remember that game. And uh, they were critical that they um, didn't make the change to take off, quickly, but it was yeah. a learning curve, and uh, Zach, I think, built on from that game, and as you know now, he's obviously a very quality defender. Dicko, we've done some work in the under-18s. Go back a few years, uh, 
in the under-18s when they won the grand final on grand final day. Boundary uh, man went up to interview him and he dropped the magic straight away. Did he? <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you what, though. If you want to make league footy, you, you can thank your parents a lot genetically. There's not many six-foot-five backmen with his type of reach. His ability to impact and spoil is, is first class, and that's what Ross Lyon sees in him and trusts in him. He's got an enormous reach on him that can spoil a resting ruckman or a genuine key position forward. Both sons down, three dockers up. That's how easy that contest was. And Barlow to send it back. De Boer. Costly error there. Off the ground went Ballantyne. Oh, okay. Off the ground, into the path of Hill. Oh, God. well done. That's, that has to be quite an opportunity. I think so. I think he took three sets before he... Did he get a handle away? Pierce from 50. He likes that situation. And he kicks a goal. Well, the only thing I can say about that is, was it not getting the tackle good? Because I thought he took two or three steps thinking he didn't have the pressure behind him. If it's not getting the tackle, it still should be. Yeah. Hold okay, on. Let's get a look from this oh, angle. One, two, three... What? Well, that's got to be private. Yeah, that's, that's, that's gone. That yeah. is gone. Cold. Yeah, but anyway. Good. He butted up again and uh, got the ball, as you should do, when you get an escape from the umpy then. Been good for them, Daniel Pierce. Yep. Margin out to 32 points after Pierce gets the goal. Well, he's another great story, isn't he? Yeah, you know, he looked like his career was coming to a quick end. And, well, it's not too many people want to put their hand up and say he's welcome at our club. We want him. They no. probably thought his days are completely over. But Fremantle saw that he was going to release another player in Stephen Hill as to... Well, he might tag. suffer the, the run with Tagger on a, a, an outside type-ish player. Yep. Clearing kick will find the boundary. So when Hill gets the tags as the main run through the lines midfielder... Pierce can then step into the breach as the as the second backup. They were really well served for big midfielders who were in and, and amongst it and can use the ball in traffic. But that player who can run from line to line and further, that's what he's added to. Go out on the floor there. It's been a good learning curve for the for the, yeah. the Gold Coast midfielders. Like just there, Amira. He hasn't been able to break free from those three mantle players yeah. in close all night. He's had no room. So means that that's the standard that he has to get to. Ooh, he's taken on the path, and done him. And the kick throws off the side from May. Sandilands to Fife. Pierce. Just stands up really dangerous in the Dockers. They're just doing as they like, even though they're going backwards. Yeah, yeah. Duffield. Farlan. Barlow wants it long to the wing. It's a bit closer because Sandilands is a bit taller. Rose, then. Kept in by Prestia. Slides the handball through. Nichols a fumble. Now Amira some pressure, but he pops it up high. McFarlane reads it pretty well here. And he forces Lynch to be the defender in the attacking situation. When Luke was at Hawthorne, he was a charming young man. Why does he live with him, damn it? He was the nicest bloke in the world, wasn't he? Right he probably still on. is, but. He's learned to uh, dish it out a bit on the footy field since those days, Ben. So he dishes it out, gets rid of uh, Spur, but off the ground goes Johnson. Pierce first to it. Oh, speed. And can he get away from Cameron? Standing in the way, though, was McKenzie. Still going to Sun. Sumner inboard to Stanley. His kick is a poor one. So you lived with him, Dicko? Certainly did, damn it. When he first came to the club, very quiet Western Australian. I thought I'll ring him in and um, show him the ropes. And he was a little bit Jack Johnson-ish, kind-souled, kind-hearted. Now he's uh, he's got a few scalps along the way these days. He has. Uh, he always had that natural speed, which um, was very appealing for our back line. But you're right. He used to play the guitar. Very talented man, but also to live with. Very um, careful with his money too, damn it. <laughs> Risk a telly with a quick snap. As ben Dixon throws <laughs> McFarlane under the bus. <laughs> yeah. We've all come across a few of them in our time at footy clubs. Good afternoon, good evening, Russell Green. Oh, <laughs> Duffield with a long kick. 
may come right over the top of the spoil. How many players at ground level? One of them is Sandlin's, if you can believe that. He <laughs> got on hands and knees and got it back. Stanley just knocks it forward. Johnson didn't panic. Well, Monday's kick will only find May. And good smother. From Sutcliffe, and now they're away. Oh, look, May, I'm watching May through the middle. He runs a whole lot quicker when he's got the ball than when he's chasing an opponent. There's still a three here. Oh, Ballantyne. It was three on one. He's kicked it to the one. Lemons is that one. Oh, he oh. wants the line. He scores the try. Oh. It didn't go out. Didn't go out. <laughs> didn't ground it. Cutting through Suchley, but he can't kick the goal. And, well, uh, what an anti time. Mike yeah. Williamson would say they're dog tired out there. <laughs> oh, they are. They. I was watching Stephen May trying to chase Pab, and Pab showed him a clean set of heels because there was a sniff he was going to get it on the other way. And May's head started wandering from side to side. Oh, they are, they're out in their feet. Sean Lemons tried to dive over the line. <laughs> Billy Slater. Oh. Just maintaining some possession here, the Suns. Down by 30. Three points. 66 to 33. Yeah, well, this won't get the job done, but hopefully it's just maybe stem the scoring for a while. But they need to go a bit quicker play than that. He's the roommate of the year, McFarlane. <laughs> <laughs> and then the kick goes back, and Mr. Oh, no. juggles it. And made the mistake. Johnson. I'm not sure who he was handballing to. Mackenzie caught on his right boot. Oh, that's dumb. And he gave it up because it screwed all the way back to five. Now some run from Duffield. Long ball looking for Pav. Over the back. And then they want the boundary line. Down time running. They get the boundary line and they'll have a boundary throw in. What's uh, Sandy up to? We've got a Sandy watch. Sandy watch. Okay, we'll check out before this one. He's he coming off. 51. He's to 51 hit outs. 19 to advantage. He's now on uh, world record uh, territory for hit outs to advantage. Arbrow. So evasive. That kick, a tough one for Dixie to mark. If he gets there, Big Charlie You're You're right takes it and has to wait. It's for Tom Lynch. A quiet night, just a second mark. And again, he's going to have to wait as well. Yeah, Matera is going to be the option, but he was already, already covered and they had three players. Now they've got four players back. This will just go out of bounds here and fight another day. And Benny, there's another one of your uh, ex teammates. We, we spoke of him a second ago. Zach Dawson is one of those folks that. He can walk into uh, change rooms and he accidentally knees you in the thigh and he, he's just one of those troublemakers, isn't he? Yeah, he's one of those unorthodox blokes. It's like if you were training with a corky, he would find it. He's just got that knack. But um, <laughs> uh, Steve Lawrence was like that too, Dermot. Yes. Yeah. Stanley did well to get it back to Hall. He wants a player out wide. He's got one. Yeah. Lynch, he was about to straighten up, but the Dockers closed him down. Still going the Suns. Good movement. Yep. Colour Jasney. Out wide. It's Cameron who kicked it forward. Better. Dixon's there, but numbers went out. Five on two. Yep. Touched on the way out. Front and square. Sheridan. Sub to Barlow. And that's not his best. I think Michael Barlow, as soon as he saw that rain, I think he's just rubbing his hands together saying, This takes it all off. Yeah. This is where I come in my own here. Get, they all come back to my pace. <laughs> Oh, he's a good player in the dry, too. Don't remember that. Oh, yeah. Super. There he is again. Tough one for Lemons to mark, but he recovers pretty well. McKenzie. Tackle is a good one from Hill. McKenzie again. Thompson. Back in board, a dangerous handball to Sheridan. Hill's hurt himself down behind play, too, Matty. Yep. He's slumping a little bit as Main gives it back to Sheridan, who's one than the other, and it's untidy handball. Barlow to mop up. Chipped it because it was two on one. The second man there was Mzungu. Tries to get it towards Pavlich. Spoiled. They all have to get up and wait. Cameron. It's very close to knocking it straight out. That was a good spoil, wasn't it, by Rory Thompson? Pav tried to protect the drop, but he got a fist to it. So it's a legitimate attack on the ball, and he clambered all over him in the end, but that was after the fist on the on the footy. Zach's having a run in the work, is he? It's pretty close in here. 
Christie couldn't get free. Fife just gave it to Subin. Subin around the corner. Too far. Let's have a look at the next five games for the Gold Coast. Good showing here today, but they fell away with the against the experience of the Fremantle Dockers. Still 10 minutes to go, best part of, but they're 34 points adrift. So they've got Brisbane, Hawthorne, Melbourne, GWS and the Kangaroos. Three, three out of the five winnable there, I would think. Yeah, a couple three of home. Yeah. They've been, you know, they've been good at home. Yeah, Six out of the last eight. Yeah, no doubt. Gone. And under some pressure here in their back 50. McKenzie to Thompson. Yeah. And he wants to get it out of there. And up goes Dawson. Doesn't come down with it, unfortunately. Duffield and Spur working hard for the Dockers. Lynch takes them on. Doesn't quite succeed. In Spur. They, they are pretty good at ground level there. They're tall Gold Coast forwards. Yeah, it's been a wet night tonight. But you can still see they've got the attitude to get down deep and, uh, you know, in dry weather, I think that'd even be a lot better, and there's no doubt about that. But they've got that ability. Here he goes Hill from the contest. Oh, explodes to the 50 and explodes it through the goals. He's got better as he's gone on to him. Just the, the break, he's breaking away from the packs. Not just that one, but all those bigger bodies, the ball spills out a bit wider, doesn't it? Yeah, absolutely. What a set of heels there. Oh, clean as then. 23 disposals, 14 of them contested, four clearances. I don't think I've ever seen Gary Ablett give up on the chase from as close. Mm. He was the one chasing him then and, and gave up on it because he knew he wasn't going to impact. Wow, the, he was that quick away from it then. Ablett had him within a metre and in the end gave up because he knew he couldn't couldn't hunt him down. Gary Ablett's lightning. Stephen Hill moved away from him. 3-0 chant up as they hit the 40-point margin. Crowley kept going. Jumped on top of That's him. That's holding the ball, too. He said it was held in there, but he pulled it under. Over the top five. Ballantyne. Couldn't get clear. And he's holding the ball. We talk about taking your opportunities. Since the fourth minute of the first quarter, Gold Coast have had 39 inside 50s and only kicked two goals. So yeah. it's just obviously a damning stat, obviously from a defensive point of view, but Fremantle, but something to learn for Gold Coast. I, I can't think of another team who, maybe Sydney, who are so comfortable to allow the ball to live in their own back line and, and just know that as long as it's down there, they're not going to get a shot away or a score. Kept it going here, the Gold Coast. Really persistent there, and they finally got it to Riscatelli, but he hooked his kick. It didn't give up. Johnson read it the best. And now he's got Barlow, and Barlow's getting plenty of it in this last quarter. He's the uh, major ball winner on the ground now. You've got a feel for young Trent Nichols. Oh. He, uh, oh. <laughs> Chandler Lance has had a seven-minute breather on the bench. Zach Dawson's jumped into him and kneed him for the last seven minutes, and now Sandlands comes back out, and he's down the line, and and then Tom Nichols, sorry, Tom Nichols has to uh, stand next to 20, 20 games experience in this one game. Oh, 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 yeah. 20 ice packs here. <laughs> Just playing with him here. The Dockers. Barlow gets it from Johnson. He's up to 30 disposals. Oh, he's, had a ball. he's had a ball out there. He's got Fife and Mundy pressing him as well. Kick. No, Stanley. Matera trapped it for the first, but didn't quite take it. Duffield flipped it back to Spur. On the up, Mzungu. Waiting for it was McFarlane. And Colin Jasmine pushes it over the And covers with the ground. Frio's next five. A big game next Some Friday. Awesome. What about that? For five weeks of <laughs> footy, you just can't miss. Yeah. Touch, Touched off the boot as Swallow kicks it up high. Play on. It might just fall. It doesn't. Everything going Fremantle's way at the moment. Here's five. It's the battle now between those three premier midfielders. Who ends up with the most possessions? 29, 29 and 30. And a few Brownlow boats, I think. 
They won't share it. They won't get them all. All right, Sandy's on 19 to advantage. 52 hitouts in total. 53. Pushing the back, Gold Coast Brave. Free kick will come to Stanley. Play on. He wants to really switch it. He's just going to kick it straight to Barlow. Play on, Chips it over the top to Pierce. We want to get it moving quickly, and he does. Loves to roll off the line onto his left boot. He hooks it back. Right. Beautiful pass. Well, that is a super kick to find Sheridan. I'm, I'm not going to disagree with how it ended up, but I don't think it was meant to end up that way. But the dangerous kick is that if you think on the left, you think that would go to the left-hand side looking into the forward 50 as soon as he wheeled. That went to the right. You know, yeah. it's hard to defend that. And I, if he meant it, it's a magnificent kick, no doubt about it. Oh, Look, okay. All right, well, let's give him the yeah. benefit of the doubt. If he looked up and saw that, that is a hard kick to defend because you know a left footer will roll on the left and keep it on and the left. And that's where you go into his vision. Yeah. Yep. Exactly. Sheridan to finish off, and he does. And the margin blows out just a little bit more. Now out to 46. Difficult night to score. 11 goals, 13, 79 is a big score. In this type of condition, in these types of conditions, so have a look at them in 2013. Their average score was 93 points per game. The 2014, they average it out now 116. Handball receives less handball, so they're kicking the ball more. Play on after a mark. They're going, going on in play on mode much more often. Freo definitely trying to move the ball quicker in yep. the two games we've seen this year and give their forwards a greater chance of of getting on the end of it oh, and that's scoring. That's a bad tap out from Sandy Lance yeah. <laughs> What? Did you get a minus one for I, that? I reckon he's tired. He couldn't get the distance <laughs> with a tap out. Here's a chance for Hall. Not 15. That's almost straight up in the air. Oh, that's yeah. off the tourist boot. That's sort of summing up this last quarter. Yeah, bit of a story there. All right, if they seize up everything, you'll have to kick it down the line, Matty, and it'll, Go out for safety, it'll spill over the boundary, and Sandy will reload again. There you go. Free kick. No, it's a free kick to Walters. They've had three goal kickers, and only one small forward when the uh, mature kick goal after getting a 50-metre penalty after a free kick. He's going back now. The Walters, it's an amazing setup. I think the Walters and um, Ballantyne, as two small forwards, not just their goal kicking, but their defensive work too. Well done by Sumner, just trap it with the boot there. He might get it back, he might be the only option that Lynch has got. He goes one way, then the other, and then hooks it back to no one in particular. And Johnson takes the easiest of marks. Yeah, Brandon Matera had, had really had no right to think he was going to swing onto that boot and, and kick a 65 metre pass lace out in these conditions. Mundy to Barlow. Back to Mundy. The tradition continues for the Dockers. Pie walked under a coverage over the back. Chance for five. Oh, wouldn't, he wouldn't come up for him. He was well tackled by May. He had it for a while. <laughs> he didn't do it in the 360. Yeah. He did a 720 holding it in the tackle. It wasn't May. It was Cameron. Good tackle. He's been okay. He pushes it out wide, hoping for Lynch. He's got the height advantage. Play Cameron. Okay. Quick give from Day to Lynch to Thompson. All six foot five combining. So oh, oh, face plant into the into oh, Charlie oh, Dixon. Oh. Well, there you go. Well, <laughs> that was that. He's not sure where to go because he doesn't have a lot of options. We'll come to you in a second, Benny Dixon. Stanley. Beaten to it by Spur. He reached the boundary. Or Dawson. I'm not sure it went over. Zach Dawson, then he ran with the fly to the ball and he actually face planted into Charlie Dixon, not this one. <laughs> That's the DDT, that oh, one. Oh, beautiful. Yeah, Zach accidentally headbutted him. He's yeah. just one of those folks who just accidentally hurts people. He doesn't say sorry either, do No, no, which makes you wonder. Lynch somehow Good falls effort. for him and they may have got a goal just when he didn't think they'd kick anymore. Lynch does. Well, 
Well, big Tom Lynch slots that one through. Gold Coast have been a while between drinks for them. Now, this is last year's goal kickers. Ablett, on ball, a small forward. Hall, small, agile forward. Campbell Brown, small forward. Charlie Dixon, big. Harley Bunnell, midfielder, small forward. So, apart from Charlie Dixon, they get all their goals from the small-ish type players who float through the midfield forward. Thanks, guys. Just the rock. So, that's, that's not good enough. That's not good enough. You have to get those other two to three tools up in the four line and hold them. They've got to be one a game, don't they? Oh, no doubt. I mean, any more than you one a game, you, 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 you're loving it. But you play a game as a key forward. One game, one goal is your, is your start. Pavlic couldn't quite find the boundary there. He was desperately trying to. He wasn't there. <laughs> he stopped. That's how tired they are. Oh. Two and a half minutes remaining. If this is cricket, the captains would have shaken hands now and said, let's go in early. Sunderland's pushing it out, but Lemons was in the way. Pierce. Step. Yo. He to get his kick away. <laughs> Somehow, they're going to have a shot at goal. I guarantee you there's one group of blokes who don't want to go in early. It's the forwards. They're no. thinking, cash in time. Yeah, cash no. in. Yep. Two goals, four to Walters. We often speak of the, the time in games called junk time. It's one of the most eagerly contested times that a forward will run his hardest when you've got the other team on the rack. The midfield saying, yeah, we'll keep going. The forwards will bust everything just to get the, another one against their name. 2-5 for Walters. A little bit, a bit proppy there, isn't he? Askew, yeah, he's been sore. He had that ankle issue in the second quarter. Big long ball. Plenty of players at the drop. You might do it, Some man. the first to it for the Suns. Oops. Um, that's incorrect disposal, so that's a free kick. That pass one didn't know that Valentine was coming. Oh, that's a little bit. Valentine. Oh, gee, you've got to watch this. Yeah, the little one. He's probably trying to milk a 50 metre free. The only man on the ground with 100% effectiveness by foot. Came on late in the game, I might add. Eighth possession to him. Tommy Sheridan. Can he stay that way? Keep it up. Okay. Just to the right. Haven't done any bombs down the centre of the ground when the game was sort of slipping away, have they, Gold Coast? Been about opportunities for points. And, but they've kicked 15 points for him now. But... Here's Duffield to clean up the error and yeah, kick the goal. Yeah, he's a very good kick, Duffield. I'm talking about kicking, that was a shocker. Yeah, <laughs> yeah skinny with you know, it, didn't he? Yeah. With the wet weather, and you, you get behind the scoreboard, I'm thinking maybe just manufacture a couple of, you know, smash it down the middle, try and knock on, let it slide through and run on with numbers, but this one was just a missed target. And it helps if Rory Thompson's actually watching the ball, the ball come towards yeah, him instead of running away. If that had had a bit more elevation on it, it would have hit him in the back of the head. Late goal for Duffield, had a good night. 23 disposals, 3-0. Just under 30, well, just over 35,500 people here tonight. Oh. will remain undefeated, two from two, with a healthy percentage early on after their big win last week. And that's off the side of the boot for Danny Stanley. Subin, desperate to keep it moving forward. And time for one more hit out from Sandy. All right, Sandy's on 55 hit outs and 20 of them to advantage. So he's got our world record for hit outs to advantage. He's, what is he, still eight behind the great Gary Dempsey for total hit outs. All right, seven. 56. Maybe they'll knock it out here and get one more. Maybe. Maybe. He, right at the moment, he's equal ninth on the all time. Get that better, Tom. Ryan! Oops. Here he is. Let him slip. No, he's, oh, he's got he's it down. Right over the top. <laughs> Nichols trying to go with second effort, though. Ablett. 
hasn't been affected tonight. And I think Crowley's uh, won that battle. I think he's had about 23 disposals, but it's, it's just a question of 24 now. It's just 24. This hasn't damaged. Oh, they haven't had control either. Yeah. With Sandman's dominance, it's pretty hard. Matty, you're, um, you're not getting it like that straight to Monday. Straight to Monday. It's too easy. He's doing that all night. Yeah. Main. Good man. Five seconds. Well, he's going to put it out in front of the skipper and say, go on, catch that. Yeah, it doesn't matter. After a very tight first half, well, there's two goals of difference at quarter time. There's two goals of the difference at half time. The Dockers asserted their authority, got on top of the contest, got on top of the scoreboard. And in the end, after a dominant performance by the biggest man in the game, the margin's a healthy one. Eight goals. And they're still up. And right up there with Northland, there's two teams to beat in the competition. Very dominant when they were when they put the foot down, when the other team showed the slightest well, a degree of a flinch in terms of their, their physical size, their strength, their power across the ground. It's, it's four years old in a competition, apart from Gary Ablett and a, and, a, and a sprinkling of seasoned players. They're a four-year-old team, so you've literally got an under-23 side playing against a very, very well seasoned team of big, big men. Let's go down to <laughs> big, big, big men. men. Yeah, Benny Dixon, you're with the biggest of all of them. I am, Dermot. And now, uh, Aaron, you had 58 hit-outs tonight uh, in the conditions, uh, dominated. Yeah, look, it was a tough night. Um, wet nights, so we knew we had to get it in and under to, uh, to win the contest and win the game. And, uh, I thought we did that. Dermot was counting you down. You were five short of the all-time. Um, Gary Dempsey, 63 uh, hit-outs, but Positive for tonight, he had 20 to advantage, so it's obviously a good night in and around the ball. Yeah, look, the chemistry is really uh, building most of the group. We've got a lot of guys that can go through the midfield now, and it's um, starting to gel really well. Body's feeling good? You look like you're really enjoying your footy. Yeah, love my footy at the moment. It's just good to be fit and, and running around with all the boys. Good, good bunch of guys, and really love being out here. When you're running out, you think, oh, it's going to rain here, it's not my day but, uh, or night, but these conditions, you actually like them. Yeah, this is where you need Eddie out over here, we'll be all right. <laughs> well, now. That's right. Get a look at it for the people at home. I know we talk about his size. Benny Dixon's around your, your six foot one, six foot two type bloke. I was just hoping he'd just hit Benny on the top of the head for another hit out. Benny Hillard. <laughs> he's just, he's, until you stand next oh, to Aaron Sandlands, you say, scary. oh yeah, he's seven foot. Yeah, right, okay. But I, was, you don't know what seven foot is in a person until you stand next to one. On a serious note, the, the, the ability for him to knock to advantage to Monday to five yeah. and Barlow is just. Yeah. Pretty to watch, but yeah, let's, well. let's go down to Ben again. Well, man, you've got some on my size now.